rescue op, save the dinosaurs from an island that's about to explode. What could go wrong? Turn to Jurassic World one minute time. I'm Brad. I'm Dave. And in this episode, we're discussing minute 67 of Fallen Kingdom. But before we get to that, Dave, heading briefly over to Jurassic-pedia.com, we've got a very quick article up here, or well, very short article, I should say, on uh, Jurassic Park survival. Uh, we talked about it in uh, last month's minutes. Unlike some other uh, fan sites, whatever you want to call. Wikipedia isn't about revealing the news up to date. Uh, we don't have to. We're not trying to get clicks by creating stories about something we just don't know bugger all about. <laughs> so it's good here to have this article up of just the facts. We know the game name. We've sort of got the characters. Uh, we've got the species in the game because we've seen them in the trailer. We're not uh, creating hour long videos or content there speculating because. In a couple of months' time, when more stuff comes out, that stuff will be mute and uh, no mm-hmm. longer <laughs> no longer relevant. So, um, look, our article up here by Sickle Claw, done in uh, mid December, when the notification or the announcement of the game's release was made. Yeah, this is basically just a placeholder article that's here purely to have the framework ready, so that when the game actually comes out, we can expand this much more than yeah. what it's currently in. Yep, it's going to be easy to do so, because as I said, you already got the character section here and uh, the species. All you're going to be doing is adding the new names and linking them to uh, their own articles in the in the Pedia, so... Mm-hmm. So, yeah. For that one, head over to Jurassic-Pedia.com. If you want to go check out others, <laughs> other sites, YouTube channels, do it. Just remember, it's all speculation. We know nothing. Blue's DNA will be part of the next Indoraptor's makeup. So it will be genetically coded to recognize her authority and assume her traits. Empathy, obedience, everything the prototype you have now is missing. Okay, so how long is this going to take? It's not a sprint, Mr. Mills. It's a marathon. Marathon sounds expensive. Dave, ready to get into minute 67. Sounds good. All right, minute 67. The Fallen King opens with Maisie in front of a dark cage and ends with the Eye of Sauron watching over Lockwood Estate. As we entered minute 66, Maisie was getting closer to danger down uh, ye old alleyway, and Mills was asking Henry if he could improve on Indoraptor version 1. Rue responds, yes, yes, I can do it. And as the two walk off, Mills scoffs, calling Rue a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, but Maisie is continuing to walk backwards as she does. We see a dark shape reaching out through the darkness to uh, grab her. And like all movie monsters, it gently... Claw, runs its claws over a ponytail, uh, harmlessly causing Maisie to turn suddenly, and the Indoraptor and her scream. You can see the raptor, it's got more extension here. It could have just grabbed her and pulled her in. Uh, but again, <laughs> we can't kill Maisie. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. This whole thing, the whole shtick that the Indoraptor kind of goes for is it's creepy. It's like a serial killer as a dinosaur. So it's definitely it's like going for that kind of like creepy serial killer stroking the ponytail kind of thing. <laughs> it's kind of interesting here because the, uh, so the Indoraptor's arm here that we're seeing was actually a animatronic uh, rig that was, it was actually built for a body suit. So you like strap this arm to your body and then you control it as, uh, with, a, with a wire harness for the, make the arm uh, extend forward and then the claw gently stroke the here. It's actually really cool to see how they did it. Yeah, and but even sort of going off the size, the scale of the arm here too. It's called the Indoraptor, but really it's it's bigger. It's more like a almost like a baryonyx or a sort of a, a more of a larger yeah. carnivore. Uh, again, something to keep an eye on later on with whether or not that scale changes. Because I <laughs> know oh we do get one moment it's on top of uh, like it's on top of a skeleton in the museum area looking down at someone and then next minute it's um large again so keep an eye on that but it, it, it they did downscale the indominus rex a little bit uh as we see later also 
there are some smaller spaces that it can't get to because it's too big. So maybe mm-hmm. maybe version 3.4, 3 or 4 is going to be more proper Velociraptor size or something a little bit tinier. Imagine, imagine these things as compies. Are just uh, on the I was just thinking that like, it was like maybe di- like Blue's size, it'd be much more easy to handle yeah. at least. Yeah, cheaper to feed too. <laughs> But uh, Maisie runs out of the alley just as Mills casually walks by and grabs her, trying to calm her down, and we can hear the animal growling in the background. Maisie yells at Mills, what is that? What is it? And uh, that's when we cut back to her room. So we don't get uh, much more in this, uh, or any more in this minute downstairs anyway. But we do cut to Maisie's room as the door flies open and Mills just pushes her into the room and she falls, trips. I'm going to say she trips to the floor, uh... He wasn't that forceful with her, but uh, he turns and closes the door, and lucky enough, it being an old house, uh, we can see him physically turn the key in the door lock. <laughs> Which, um, I assumed he took the key, but as he's walking away here, he sort of je- when he gestures mm-hmm. to Iris, it doesn't look like that key or the tassel's in his hand anyway, so... Well, I think he leaves it in the... Uh, I think he leaves it in the keyhole, which kind of leads Maisie to do... If you ever seen that old, I can't remember if it was a Mad TV or some some kind of spoof cartoon they did, where Lex ra- uh, locks a raptor in the closet and leaves the key in the hole, and the raptor bumps up against the door, knocking the key out of the hole onto a piece of paper, and then slides the key under the door, which is basically what Maisie does later. Where have I seen that? That that's bringing back a memory now. The old yeah, the old. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the show. It's like one of those old spoof shows. Yeah. And it's the, again, the old trope of, yeah, someone leaves the key in the outside, knock it out, knock it onto a piece of paper or something and slide it back under the door. Mm-hmm. Clever girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was the name of the cartoon, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and obviously... We're talking about a over a hundred year old house here. I don't think there's en suites in those rooms, so he's not completely heartless. But uh, Iris would need to get her out if uh, if anything happened. But Iris is standing there across the hall. Uh, Mills tells her to keep Maisie in there and keep the door locked. Iris asks, "You wanted to keep her? You want to keep her locked in there?" And Mills replies, "That's exactly what I want." As he starts to walk down the stairs, I don't think he thought a lot about this. Maybe he could have spun a story or even told Maisie that uh, the only animals that have left are the ones that have been previously created and with the volcano gone, no one's making new ones, so he's sort of doing this to ensure their survival or something, but I think Maisie's pretty cluey. She would have seen through his BS anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, taking her up and locking her in a room, it's... Again, like he's panicking a bit, he's he's making some dumb decisions. He just wants to try and get to this auction and get it out of the way, and then he can deal with the repercussions later uh, once he's once he's got his money. But uh, as Mills turns to walk down the stairs, Iris tells him that Mister Lockwood wants to see him, and we see the look on his face change. That look of oh no, I'm being called into the headmaster of the principal's office. <laughs> uh, because she continues, I think it's important, uh, and then she puts her hands together like she seems to be in on or know exactly what's going to happen here, that perhaps he might be losing his job, just the way she brings her hands together there, as she tells him. Mm-hmm. But uh, anything not, not on that? <laughs> I, I just think it's kind of, um, you, you when you put that image in my ha- head of HR calling in, yeah, I'm going to need you to come into the office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about that time you start walking around throwing stuff in your pockets. <laughs> no, Sorry, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, then we cut to black and... Uh, the score kicks into high gear here, where uh, we're suddenly in Middle Earth and we pass over Mount Doom to reveal none other than a ship and a harbour. It's We'll probably get into this next minute, but as the minute ends here and we see the Arcadia steaming into the harbour, it's it's coming in from the ocean. This lighthouse is on the 
inland side of a peak shining light over the harbour and inland it's it wouldn't actually be showing the light out into the unless the Acadia's come up and around the back of this bluff this island whatever it is it's a it's a weird shot here to have this uh, this lighthouse as the ship comes in the dock here and night time so again it uh, it takes a day to get from New, uh, Nublar to uh, <laughs> Northern California <laughs> or Costa Rica anyway yeah. Well, what I assumed it was was this was I assumed it had entered a large. No, you're right. The geography is weird. I, I thought it was. I thought it was on like a very large rock, but it's at the bottom of a hill. And I assumably that it is showing that hill wraps around the back of the mountain and through the valley. Hmm. And it, sh- it shines off off into the ocean, but yeah, the sh- the Arcadia would have had to have turned around in order for that to have made sense. It like, would have had to make a U turn, which maybe it did. Yeah, but then off. You uh, see, it being uh, guided by two pilot uh, boats here. You see yeah. two tugs leading it into the onto the dock, which is smart. Yeah, and I don't. We do see. It sort of pointing this way in, in the next minutes when it's unloading with the mm-hmm. lighthouse off to the left so it whether it has to line up on the dock that way it had to come in turn and point back the way it just come from just the, the way that we get this and I, I, I don't think it's a helicopter shot it's just all complete cg but the the act of the mm-hmm. helicopter shot here flying past the lighthouse it certainly looks like the arcade has come in from the top of screen and if that's the case, the way the lighthouse is situated there, yes, the hill continues up higher than the, the height of the lighthouse behind it. Just, yeah, just a weird little bit of... But again, it's a, it's a two-second scene of a lighthouse here as Arcadia's coming in. I don't know if we need the lighthouse. I don't know how many lighthouses work or used to work on the northern American coastline there. I don't think it's an overly rough section of coast i'm probably wrong on that because normally well the, the reason... pacific side of the coast is very rough and i know for i know that of the lighthouses i've seen usually it's at the end uh it's like set off on a rock in a bay or at the end of a jetty or something like that that allows it to guide ships into a harbor <laughs> yeah right yeah but like, but yeah, like we said, the for this to have worked, the Arcadia would have had to made a U-turn with the pilot boats guiding it. Hmm. And normally they do that right in front of the dock because that's normally the deepest part of the harbour. But here, um, it's back up, yeah, mm-hmm. more to the north. But anyway, <laughs> it's a nitpick for a two-second scene. <laughs> Um, but that's it for minute 67 Dave uh, I think we've covered that pretty well how about we get every for the week sound good alright lovely 